Hello everyone, it's Truds here and today we've got a Destiny 2 video for you. This is your season prep guide with a difference as we go through the top world loot pool weapons in season 11. With season 11 due its imminent arrival, there's a whole slew of changes coming in both terms of the major story going on in Destiny 2 and of course the ever trusty sandbox. With Season 11, there's a number of changes coming to the loot pool in anticipation of the impending Great Weapon and Armour Sunsetting of 2020. Gone are the vendor weapons and activity specific loot and in its place is the new Shared World Loot Pool. So in today's video, we're going to discuss and go through some of the top contenders to look out for in Season 11's World Loot Pool with a particular heavy lean on weapons and roles that will survive the initial sunsetting phase in the Autumn DLC. This is basically a mini weapon review, so I'll put timestamps below in the description to help find certain weapons that you're searching for. As of making this video, there is no specific farmable way to obtain these other than these being found in the normal legendary engrams, some of which are already in the legendary loot pool, but they will now also be found as end of game rewards for any major activity playlist. Not all of these weapons are in the meta as such, but they do have some unique roles that are strong and viable in PvE and the Crucible. So first up, we're going to look at Escape Velocity. This is the returning Year 1 Dead Orbit Faction Rally's 900 RPM SMG. It's a lightweight frame which allows you to have faster movement speed and also speeds up the reloads. SMGs aren't in the meta PvP wise, but this one does have some interesting roles for you to consider nonetheless. Now if you've seen any of my gameplay from this season, you will have seen this SMG in action many times and for good reason. It already has a high magazine due to its high rate of fire, but you can bump this up to over 80 rounds with Overflow. In my honest opinion, Overflow is a top tier perk that is gravely overlooked in all aspects of the game. Being able to hose down onrushing opponents, whether that be waves of Thrall or XX420 no scope 69XX in the Crucible, is very handy. By simply picking up special or heavy ammo, you will activate this perk and auto reload the magazine beyond its capacity. Now the beauty of Overflow on this SMG is that it comes with two other perks in the final column which pair perfectly with it. Surrounded and Vorpal are two perks you should be looking out for. Surrounded will bump up the damage by 30% much like Kill Clip and Rampage, except you only need to be near three or more enemies to activate this perk. You can even extend the duration of this perk with the Surrounded spec mod, which you can obtain this from the aid of one in the tower and it will add one second to the perk's timer after you are no longer surrounded by enemies. Now Vorpal is a relatively new perk added in Season of Dawn and it will increase weapon damage against bosses, vehicles and guardians in their supers. It's a great perk which is now common on a number of newer weapons. Add either of these perks with Overflow and this SMG will be a good option for endgame content and shutting down supers. Sticking with the Dead Orbit theme, next up we've got Dire Promise. Another returning Destiny 2 vanilla favourite and guess what, it's still everyone's favourite now too. It's slowly edging out the spare rations meta, which with sunsetting imminent, I'd expect to see a lot more of these plague in the Crucible. It's a 150 RPM lightweight frame hand cannon, which under the right circumstances, just dominate in PvP. Now, Dire Promise has some great perk options, with Overflow being one to consider, especially in PvE. It'll bump the magazine to over 20 rounds, which when paired with something like Swashbuckler in the final column, you've got yourself a very handy piece. But Dire's PvP options make it a top option, as it can roll with opening shot. This increases the accuracy and range of your first shot in any engagement, which when paired with rangefinder and a ranged masterwork, it maxes out the dueling range of this hand cannon. You can also consider snapshot sights to boost the handling of this weapon too, if that's your preference. 
all in all, a great weapon which we will definitely be seeing more of. Now that we've set the standard, it'd be rude not to continue with the faction rally theme we've got going on. So another top world loot pool will be the future war cults, Enigma's Draw. Another returning Destiny 2 vanilla faction weapon, this 260 RPM precision frame sidearm is quietly in a nice spot. With the sidearm sniper combo becoming more popular in the PvP crowd, this one stands in good stead due to its nice range. Sidearms can be tricky to handle, especially on console due to their recoil, but you can fix this somewhat with Zen Moment, where causing damage will increase its stability. Combine this with Rapid Hit, which will increase its stability even further with Precision Hits, as well as giving a nice bump to Reload, you've got yourself a Rapid Fire Hand Cannon essentially. For those proficient in sidearms, Opening Shot and Range Finder will be a great option to bump up the range, likely a top option for PC users. Now to increase accessibility to this sidearm, I'd recommend a full auto roll with either Demolitionist to assist with grenade cooldown time, or Swashbuckler for an increase to damage output. This sidearm is an all round great choice with some great perk options and it's definitely one to consider keeping an eye out for in the new world loot pool drops. Oh man, now I know you're going to be getting sick of this right now, but we've got another faction rally weapon here with the Jan 7. Jan 7. Jan 7? I don't know how you say it, but it's a pulse rifle that in vanilla Destiny 2 was actually kind of nice and it's also kind of nice right now too. It's another one with a near full spectrum of perk options to suit all tastes. It's an adaptive frame 390 RPM pulse rifle which aren't exactly meta but they're not in a bad spot either. With everybody's favourite last edition on its way out with sunsetting, this one is set to take its spot. It has a full auto trigger option which pairs nicely with Rampage, Swashbuckler and Dragonfly for all aspects of the game and with it being predictably sweet to handle in both terms of stability and recoil, full auto is never a bad option. But for the gurus out there who want a more nuanced pulse rifle, then firmly planted is the way to go. You gain increased accuracy, handling and stability whilst crouched and this turns this pulse rifle into an absolute laser beam. You can proc this too while sliding, as long as you are crouched in some form, you'll get the benefits of firmly planted. Zen Moment is also nice for a stability boost, but I generally prefer to pair this with moving target, which isn't a perk option on this one. Rangefinder is another top option in the final column if the added zoom factor is your jam. Okay, so now I promise you this is it. This is the last faction weapon on the list. Honor's Edge, the new monarchy adaptive frame sword. Now this potentially could be the only sword in the actual loot pool for endgame content outside of exotics come the fall DLC which I find will be unlikely to be the case, but nonetheless, it's still one to consider given its accessibility to unique sword perks. It doesn't come with the somewhat overpowered Whirlwind Blade for increased damage output on rapid hits, but it does have Surrounded for a straight up damage boost, as well as perks to disorientate enemies and guarding benefits. Finally, we've escaped the grasps of the factions but now we've got the Vice Foundry weapon, Distant Tumulus. It's crazy to think that this weapon was actually a power weapon in vanilla Destiny 2, but now it's returning with an updated role as an energy weapon. Now there's nothing too crazy about this one, and the mid zoom scope might put some people off, especially with it being a rapid fire frame sniper, but it can come with the unique combination of clown cartridge and firing line. Clown Cartridge will randomly overfill your magazine from reserves, giving you a nice bump to your ammo, and when paired with firing lines increased to precision damage when near two or more allies, it's a unique role to consider probably more so in PvE. You could consider Snapshot and Dragonfly as a PvP role with a difference, but to be honest, this sniper is in a strange spot. Last up, there's the Mossy Potch Rocket Launcher. 
Now I've only added this one in here as it has similar stats to the Trials of Osiris rocket launcher Tomorrow's Answer, with it being an aggressive frame. It comes with tracking rockets and cluster bombs, which are perfect for the PvP orientated rocket launcher option. PvE wise, rockets aren't it, so don't worry about that one too much. Final round. We've got one bonus round weapon preview here in the loot pool coming to Season 11. And it's one that we can only guesstimate from its old collection's role. But Nature of the Beast is a returning vanilla Destiny 2 180 RPM precision frame hand cannon. The return of the Suros hand cannon has been a long time coming, and this could bring 180s back into the limelight. The collection's role comes with Dragonfly, which is nothing to write home about, but this frame has always felt nice and snappy, so I'm hopeful for a decent set of perks. Going on current 180s, I'd expect Dragonfly, Multi-Kill Clip and Vorpal to be in there, with maybe even Explosive Payload to fill the gap trust will vacate once it's sunset. But we will just have to wait and see. So there we go. The Season 11 World Loot Pool Preview is done. Obviously, there's a lot more options which will drop in the loot pool as outlined by Bungie in their weekly update, but these ones will be sticking around the longest and so I think good rolls will help you with options as we move into Year 4. Let me know in the comments section below which of these weapons you like so far and if there's any you'd like to see reissued in future seasons. If you are new around here, we usually cover deep dives into builds and loadouts, so if that's what you like, then please hit the subscribe button to stay up to date. Also, a rating down below is always greatly appreciated and helps to support the channel. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.